which is why like, everything looks like that. Like, oh my god, his eyes are moving. All right, well, I guess I'm uh, ready to get started here. Um, so this presentation is going to be on Newman, who was a senior design project and MSOE's animatronic spokesman. Um, this is actually like a, a GIF from MSOE's website, where you would mouse over Newman and his eyes would move. <laughs> uh, so I guess some interesting lessons to be learned from this meeting that come outside of the context of Newman himself. Um, which is something that was brought up when I was hanging out with uh, Elizabeth Giro and some archivists and just trying to get the tape to play in the first place. Um, we've gone through three VCRs to get to where we are right now, which is one that Aiden Riley brought up from home, which actually ran the tape through the rollers and then broke, so I had to cut the tape player around the tape and pull the tape out and rewind it. The library's VCR, which is this one, um, which is playing tapes in black and white, and my hopeful bullet point of Nick Seidler's VCR working, um, which uh, did not happen. Um, so it was thought by the people who have these tapes that this was put on a DVD, and it never was. Um, as far as I know, one of these tapes is the only one in existence. Um, and these are very fragile and they're not meant to be long-term storage solutions. The tapes are great over time and now even getting it to not only um, play on a working machine but to connect it to the devices that would play it on this projector proved to be difficult. I have about three converters between the tape player and the projector and it's only been about 22 years since this tape was recorded. <laughs> So <laughs> that could also be causing the signal loss. Yeah, yeah. So it's about as old as I am. The tape is like uh, a month older than me. So that's, I guess, something about it. And um, th this goes into kind of like when you preserve things. There was a big concern, kind of in the '80s and '90s, of a digital dark age. So we don't actually have the original recordings of the Apollo moon landing anymore. Um, NASA reused those tapes and they wrote over them and they never thought to save the originals. So the only recordings that we have of that come from people recording it on their TVs at home and uh, news stations recording it. So that was like a lower quality recording. Um, and after the Apollo moon landings, we really don't have a lot of recordings at all because those were overwritten and not significant enough to people to be recorded in mass. Um, also things like a lot of companies' records were stored on tape or on floppy disks and now these companies are finding out that they're not actually able to recover this important information that they had from back in the day. So you have a paper trail up to about the 1980s and then when we started putting things on digital media we never thought to move them over to newer formats and make sure that we're able to actually access these things. Um, so. Uh, that's just kind of something that I've taken away from this that was kind of interesting. I've been working on getting a tape player in this room for about three weeks and, um, you know, also acquiring the tapes. So that's just something that uh, I came across while doing this. Uh, interesting, I guess, to me. I'll be starting the uh, meeting by showing uh, TV commercials and also um, some different um, news broadcasts from back in the day. <laughs> Uh, so that's what I'll be doing next year, and I'll be recording these again after the meeting, so if you guys want to have like, comments or whatever as you're watching the videos, you can feel free to do that, because the actual digitizing recording will be done after the meeting. Uh, so, very well, I will switch over to the tape player, and unfortunately, for now, it is in black and white. And I assure you, TV in 2001 was not in black and white. <laughs> <laughs> so Are you sure about that? Uh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there was some. Okay, this should be I don't know how you do it. Oh, there's a tape in it. Ah, okay. Alright, this is the actual one. Only one of these exists in the world as far as I know. <laughs>
Uh, okay. There you go. Hello, my name is Newman. I come from a university where students learn more and do more. I'm talking about MSOE, Milwaukee School of Engineering. Students built me as their senior design project. I incorporate computer, electrical, and mechanical engineering, plus pneumatics and the creativity of some very talented students. Call today and check out MSOE's highly respected programs. Master the challenge. Experience the rewards. Call 800-332-6763. Newman here. Hello there. That's better. Just checking. Still thinking about college? What about after college? Is a high paying career important? Do you want to build things and help mankind? If so, then I might suggest MSOE here in Milwaukee. Our graduates are among the most sought after in business, industry, and healthcare. If you're ready to earn a respected degree, visit me at MSOE. Master the challenge. Experience the rewards. Call 800-332-6763. I think the person that was in that last video was Chandra, uh, who, Chandra Mitchell, who's now one of the VPs at MSOE. She was an admission counselor at the time. Hello, Newman here. Have you picked a college yet? One that'll teach you how to solve problems, build things, and leave your mark on the world. And also get you ready for a high-paying career. How about Milwaukee School of Engineering, MSOE? Look at me. I was a pile of scrap metal and plastic tubes until some seniors created me. Just think what you could do. Master the challenge. Experience the rewards. Call 800-332-6763. Hey, nice hair. Who is your stylist? Well, imagine a world where robots run many events in our daily lives. If it's up to students at the Milwaukee School of Engineering, that may not be so far off. 12 News reporter Joel Clayfish has the public's first look at Newman, the pneumatic robot of the future. Pistons pumping and valves clicking. At close look, this engineering project smacks of an auto assembly line. Step back and you'll see a face glued to this moving molehill of metal. Meet Newman with a P, like pneumatic, because he's completely powered by air. This is how we control Newman, um, especially this thing. We move a slider and one of the cylinders moves. We push a button and one of the fingers moves. 19-year-old Luke Fedke has his hands full. His job as a student is to perfect Newman, which isn't as easy as it looks. We want to make him as human as possible. So someday, robots like Newman may perform tasks in people's homes, like simulating someone is in the house when it's only a robot. If I were to encounter Newman and, and as a burglar, I think I'd be scared, yes, absolutely. Stay high, being career important. Newman may even take over jobs people perform now. You might even see them in uh, newscasts and uh, those sorts of things. Yikes. The prospect of that is hair raising. Joel Clayfish, 12 minutes at 6. Double yikes for me, too. Well, if you want to see Newman live, you can visit him at MSOE. Otherwise, you'll probably see him in MSOE's upcoming television commercials. Milwaukee engineering students have brought their senior design project to life this morning. Gus is at MSOE with a look at Newman the robot. Hello, Newman. Yeah, good morning to Newman is right. Newman the robot's an interesting character, Mark. We gotta watch carefully at this guy because I figure if you work on his face a little bit and put a suit on him, this is the future of television anchor persons. But I want you to meet Luke Fedke, who's a just begin you're gonna begin your sophomore year. First of all, good morning yes. to you, Luke. Good morning. You're about to begin your sophomore year here at MSOE. Yeah. And for this past year they gave you an intriguing project, and that's work with some of the other students and faculty that put together Newman and get the bugs worked out of it. You yeah. had a fascinating summer. Yeah, I own everything. I'm VR. 
I know in many schools, it's a long time before you get to play with the hardware, but here at MSOE, they just drop you right into it. First quarter, freshman year, and bingo, you're playing with the big stuff. Yeah, we we get the fireworks right away. (laughs) There is fireworks, too. Well, Newman, the character you put together, has a, a real future. It's not just a lab project. Newman is going to be going out into the public, and people will be seeing him acting sort of as a spokes, maybe person isn't the right word, a spokes robot <laughs> for MSOE. And it's all controlled, though, by computer, right? Yeah, we uh, control all by a mini board, and then the computer signals are sent to the figure, which translates them into okay. mechanical movement. We call them Newman, and it's spelled with a P because it's pneumatic. Yeah, pneumatic. Okay. okay if you want air. to give it a start, let's. if you start the program up right. and then take a trot over here, we'll, uh, we'll kind of meet Newman face-to-face. Is that a fair term? What a character. What was your first thought when you first met him? A little overwhelming. He's <laughs> large. Yeah. Physically big. And blue. And blue. Intimidating? Uh, slightly. Just complicated. More than intimidating. I think maybe it's more the machinery. Now, they tell me that one of the persons involved in the design of this uh, spent some time at Disney World with the animatronics people. Yeah, he spent a lot of time at Disney, and then he's also currently at Universal. He was a big animatronics guru and did a display at the Milwaukee Public Museum that used animatronics. So he was quite into it. He was uh, much more into it than I started out. But uh, it's very interesting technology, and I'm getting more into it. So what do you think? Go to Joseph A. Banks, get a suit and tie for it, maybe work on the face a little bit, and yeah, maybe. wake up news with... No. Uh, no. Well, we'll have to that's, that's up to you. That's we'll up to wait. you. That'll have I'll to wait a little while. Media. Well, this has been a big project. Mechanical engineering is, is your forte. Yes, yeah, so I'm interested in the mechanical aspects of the robot and how it... Moves. There's also an electronic part of it, though, because uh, because you use the computer. Are those two becoming integrated more and more? Yes, yes. As, as you want to control motion, you have to use computers to do the processes. And there's no way that any one person could integrate all these movements at once. So the, the machine is doing it for you, literally. Right, right. But the rest of it, the actual power for this is coming from compressed air. Yeah. So that's where the pneumatic comes in. It, it, this is um, It's programmed to do something to repeat it. Uh, we're not playing with artificial intelligence here. No, right? no, this is a giant puppet. You pull a string and something happens. Only the strings are all electrical wires now. Okay. So that it would be more related to perhaps some of the industrial robots that do the work in factories every day. Well, yeah, it's combining two consistent. It's combining two technologies. It's bringing the industry together with, with entertainment. Mm-hmm. And when you do that, you have a larger budget, but also you have a lot more complications. Okay. Um, again, it's just a puppet. Uh, when you have the difference between this and like an industrial robot is that a puppet has many more functions than like an industrial robot. It, an industrial robot does one thing day after day all the time. This has to do many different things. No matter what you do, you have to do something else. Mm-hmm. You know, you have something new. Keep it working. And well, record it and then play it back. All right. Yeah. Not sure if I want to shake hands with him because I'm not sure I'll be able to. I'm not sure whose hand will come off if we have the part company here. Yeah, he's well, just made for looking at. He doesn't do anything. <laughs> okay. Well, good morning, Mr. Newman. Or the future. Many intriguing and fascinating things happening here at MSOE. We're here in the summer. The classes will begin up soon. We'll tell you more about it, talk to some of the faculty and staff when we come back and meet more with Newman. A little bit later on in the program this morning. Stick around. I like your suggestion about getting Newman a suit. What do you think, about a 42 long, maybe? Um, Yeah, I'm afraid the arms are long enough. It's going to be a 42 long. At least that. At least a 16-inch neck suit. So take that shirt in a little bit. All right, guys, check back with you later. For context, the biggest TV show on TV was Seinfeld at the time. Yeah. So Newman was a well-known character on that show. Well, Styx once sang about Mr. Roboto. Today, the Milwaukee School of Engineering students have brought Mr. Roboto to life. This morning, Gus is down at MSOE checking out their senior project. Gus? Yeah, Mr. Roboto isn't the real... I know they're using that music, but they call him Newman with a P, uh, because it's pneumatic. Tom Wonke is uh, director of the Fluid Power Institute. Tom Bray is the dean of research here at MSOE. The projects that go on down here are kind of reminiscent of, of some of the, the movies we see. This is really high-tech stuff, but MSOE has got a reputation for not being one of the schools that just kind of dabbles in theory. You guys get practical application for almost everything that you do and great cooperation for many companies involved in this. Now, Fluid Power, for example, um, you're closely tied to that around here. Very much so. We've done uh, work in the fluid power industry since the early 1960s and continue to do so today. 
And, and a lot of it is, is ongoing projects with companies that have real things that they're working with. I was looking at some of the hardware and some of the other labs here. This is impressive stuff. You're, there's a lot of power going on in this place. Lots of power. We have lots of power in our lab, and we have long-term commitments and projects that we work on with companies. Some go back as far as 1992, and we're still working on the project today. Keeps you busy here, that's for certain. This project, uh, in addition, uses a lot of different technologies that are available here. And this was kind of this was a student project that was put together. There's electronics involved, pneumatics involved, a little bit of hydraulics, but. Some of the parts, when they were made here, these were manufactured literally right here with some high-speed prototyping equipment, right? Right. Our rapid prototyping center, which has been around for just about uh, 10 years now, uh, was used by the students to make uh, many of the parts here that you see, particularly the ones that are colored uh, blue and white. Uh, and, you know, they did the design and then the machines. They were able to run the machines. They've done an outstanding job. They really are. Now, some of this is uh, what uses laser heat to fuse things together. Some is cutaway material. It's all different methods of doing that. Yeah, there are a number of uh, rapid prototyping methods. Uh, some use lasers. Uh, some cut paper. Uh, we have uh, five of the outstanding machines, fortunately. And we're funded by a number of the companies, both in uh, Wisconsin and around the, the country and even outside of the country. Now, the school here, it, it's called Milwaukee School of Engineering. It's a university. It, it's mostly engineering. There are other divisions now as well. There's a division of nursing here and also a business division, as I understand. Absolutely, and technical communications as well. So we're definitely a university and uh, not just a school of engineering, although that's very strong. We're very strong in engineering, of course. Yeah, obviously, with laboratories like this. Well, it, Newman, people are going to be able to see Newman. He's going to get out into the public. Yes, we plan on showing him at a various trade shows. Okay. That market and advertise the school. Going to leave him open like this, or does he get a business suit? Uh, we're not sure yet if we're going to put any clothes on him or not, but well, we might. Mark and I were speculating before, 42 long. He's got rather lengthy arms, so we kind of work on that size. But other than that, he's not a bad-looking character and does a really, really good job, I think, of showing off some of the technology that you can use and apply here. And the fact that students are doing it, I think, is a great part, too, and a, and a testament to the work you're doing at MSOE. I know you have other projects, too. Would you mind if we came back and visited on another day and, and checked some of the other departments? We'd be delighted, Gus. We okay. really would. And uh, there are many, many things that you could see here at MSOE. So we'd be delighted to show you. We'll make sure we do that. We'll be back to look at more of their projects later on. In the meantime, uh, say goodbye to uh, Newman here. We'll see if we can fit him out with a suit, make a reporter out of him yet. Someday, this may be the future of your Fox 6 Wake Up News. Hmm. Uh, automation. Think about Closer that. Closer than you think. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Scott? Mark, can we get that guy to do weather first? Maybe that would be. <laughs> train him weather first and then news. That would be great. Hello, Newman here for MSOE. Did you know that MSOE has an outstanding business school? Students not only learn traditional concepts, but also the knowledge to operate in today's high-tech workplace. Raider School of Business graduates are heavily recruited and enjoy high starting salaries for a successful, well-paid career. MSOE is where you want to be. Newman is the result of a student design project. For information, call 800-332-6763. Yeah, All right, yeah, well, we're going to rewind the thing. Make sure you're kind of rewind the tape. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. yeah. You get to watch it all in reverse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, new really stop it in reverse. Oh. That one-of-a-kind tape, you know, I never heard anyone. <laughs> yeah. Weren't you trying to convert this to digital? Yeah, I'd like to. I mean, theoretically, this can. I wonder um, if any of those news stations have. Oh, yeah. Yes. They might. Yeah. That would actually be a good idea. Check, check with them. I'm sure some more, someone somewhere in this area has something. But as far as those commercials you saw at the beginning, this is the only tape that has those. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm sure there they are. There's probably a VHS program <laughs> there somewhere. So, yeah. There are a few commercials. Yeah. That's why I'm in this position. I guess. I'm sure she's something in video. Yeah. Like, in 2001. I'm now going to put it on YouTube. There is um, but there's there's two of those commercials. There's a clip video. of the, like, the students flying the airplane with the remote control. Twitter. That's oh, okay. what my dad has. He's got a VHS thing. There's Whenever there. he was here, like their whole project doing that. They got like, the whole thing. Um, recorded at the end where they're all like all the different seniors are flying their planes around and shit. Yeah. Does so two of these are, uh, two of the commercials I should say are on YouTube at like 144p. They were uploaded in like 2007. So 
for a, for a while, you could download them off MSOE's website. It was not archived to the Internet Archive, and it was compressed at low quality or dial up in DSL. So, <laughs> yeah. These would be the highest quality ones that we have access to right now. Yeah. So I would like to digitize it at some point properly. Do you guys remember the, uh, you know, the dedicated VHS tape provider things that were completely different from the VCR? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The tape I, th I think just about every time I go to a Goodwill, I find one of those. Mm -hmm. My grandma's got one. I still have mine. <laughs> the same. This is my <laughs> well, we got my parents a VCR on. Yeah, the little plane clip that you have. Oh, you yeah, made one Christmas like because they can't watch any of their wedding so. tapes before then because they didn't have a VCR. John, what happened to my VHS player? Uh, you have it now. What happened to it, John? I, 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 I have a slide on it. I put a picture of it on the slide. <laughs> Yeah, tragic. I didn't know it was trash. <laughs> I mean, you set me up for failure. I was like, what the hell? This, this is one I find is a thing. Yeah, okay. Perfect. I can't believe you're breaking my equipment, yeah. John. Aiden, oh, have you God. seen your VHS players been digitized? <laughs> Permanently. Okay. So, this is kind of a blurb from MSOE on who Newman was. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but basically, Newman was built to demonstrate the ability of MSOE students and also the power of pneumatics. And um, so basically it was entirely powered by compressed air um, and some electronic components like um, the eyebrows and things. Um, but for the most part, it was largely powered by compressed air for a fluid power institute to demonstrate what they could do. And um, like, like they kind of said in the video, rather than focusing on like a robot doing a single task like you would see in a factory, Newman was made to be very programmable and have a wide range of motion. So they, because this was kind of a senior design project, I like to go more into the story of things, but most of the information I got on Newman was largely technical because, you know, when you <laughs> see what they have about Newman, it's all like um, a senior design report. So I won't go too far into the details, but basically it has 31 degrees of freedom split three ways, which means that there's 31 different axes that Newman can move in. Um, and they're controlled with different control systems. And um, it, it has control through both analog and digital systems. So that means the air pressure itself would be used with sensors in addition to computer control, um, which is kind of interesting. They really made Newman as like a technical demonstration uh, and incorporated as many technologies as they could. So the, this would be an example of an analog sensor that would be in Newman um, and it would receive feedback through just another air hose going to the controller. So the controller knows the position of say his arm or something based off the pressure on the hose. And then there's also digital controlling valves which you'll notice instead of having a tube coming out of it, it has electrical connections um, because it's entirely digitally controlled. Um, uh, the software that powered Newman looked like this. Um, interestingly, it's still sold and looks basically the same. In the example from the company, they have it on a Mac that's running Windows XP. So, <laughs> so, uh, but it looks like the software probably can't run on modern systems. It just hasn't been updated. So that's just something kind of interesting I saw. And you'll notice that the same software that powered Newman also powers these other animatronics that you would see at other venues. Uh, and it looks like they even have like a water fountain that's controlled by the same software that ran Newman. So it was very versatile. And um, you can see it has audio waveforms as well as the actual movements. And it's kind of hard to connect, you know, these waveforms to like a uh, positional values, but uh, that's kind of how they had to do it. And you can see all the different audio tracks at the bottom, and they would synchronize the movements to the sound. Um, so, do you have a question, Ray? Yes. Do you know, like, was there like a separate controller running Newman inside like that big cabinet that like the PC talked to, or was it like all controlled by that PC they had set up? 
Um, so you, you notice there was actually this switchboard in addition to the PC itself. Um, I'm not sure exactly how it was implemented, but there was a lot of supporting hardware in addition to the computer itself. Um, so there is that. Um, the most, seat, most of it was under Newman. Yeah. So like a lot of the like actual like controls and stuff were under it, which they could then control by like the external controller. So there was like a that little board the guy had in front of him, which was a separate control board, and then they also had the you know the we did not well we had just gotten laptops at MSU at this time, so they still had it connected to like a, a regular standard PC. So. So it, Newman was built and designed by a three-person senior design team over the course of only one year. Uh, this consisted of Timothy J. Eck, Hendro Budiman, and Matthew Yoss. So they're pictured here, um, kind of a low-quality image, best I could do. Um, and I do have some pictures, actually, of them actually constructing and later. Um, you'll notice that there's a massive list of sponsors. Oh, yes, Aiden. Were you able to get in contact with any of these gentlemen? Uh, so with the time I spent trying to get the tape to play and also <laughs> talking to the marketing department, I haven't reached out to anyone outside of the university in order to do my research. Um, yes. I think if I had like unlimited time, I would. I just uh, found yes. Matthew Yaus on LinkedIn. I'm sure, yeah, maybe shoot him a connection and we can send him this uh, meeting. <laughs> But um, a lot of these companies are still around that sponsored this project, but also a lot of them don't exist anymore, which is kind of interesting. Um, and a lot of these companies, you know, mostly when you see senior design, like I'm on a senior design team right now, we only have one sponsor and they're heavily involved with our project. You know, they expect us to keep them up to date with what we're doing. Uh, it seems like most of these sponsors gave like a few valves or they gave software and they would provide some technical know-how, but uh, I don't think they were keeping in contact with all of these companies and updating them with everything that was going on with the project. So it wasn't like a traditional sponsorship, but really it does show the ability of MSOE to draw in uh, sponsors from industry and to get things going. Interestingly, WMSE Radio also sponsored Newman, um, perhaps with the audio portion. If, if I remember correctly, um, most of the companies gave money and or, of course, parts because sure. Newman has a lot of different parts that was there. I know that I'm fairly confident WMSC gave them like a money donation sure. in order to do that. And I do know that they, when they finished their report, mm -hmm. all those companies got their senior design reports. Sure. So, yeah. So. All right. I totally remember those. Things. Yeah. <laughs> <Same. laughs> So, in the design oh. phase, this oh. is what they thought of for Newman. Um, so the design of Newman, uh, basically they were told to draw up something that would be friendly and uh, entertaining. Um, they gave him teeth, the teeth were not integrated into the final product. Uh, I wonder why, you know, after the bite of 87. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can see the branding for NFPA or National Fluid Power Association and the Fluid Power Institute. So they knew from the beginning those would be the guys that would be doing that. Uh, it's kind of fascinating how similar this drawing is to the final product, honestly. Um, but yeah, these are the 3D models that they came up with. So you kind of get an exploded view of what Newman actually kind of looked like on the inside. Um, Newman, the, the design of Newman started in June of 1999 and it, the assembly ran through about, uh, well I guess the design still continued through January. So um, it's actually kind of shocking how quickly they built Newman after the design phase. Um, and he was designed using AutoCAD and SolidWorks. So same stuff that we're using now. Um, the construction of Newman. <laughs> Uh, so that's kind of a blurb that MSOE provides, but basically he was built from the bottom up. Um, there's a lot of intricacy to the face, uh, and a lot of these parts were actually built using the Rapid Prototyping Center here, so the students and MSOE staff were the people who were actually creating these plastic pieces, uh, which is kind of interesting. 
Um, here we can see this is March 19. Um, <laughs> you start to see the body shaping up. Those are the senior design team members there. Um, all of these pictures came from the MSOE website. Uh, if you went to msoe.edu at the bottom of the page, it would say, uh, learn about Newman. Uh, and I have a screenshot of that later, of that button on our homepage. And then it would take you to a page all about Newman. So there's that. And then this is uh, March 31st. We're basically done with the guy, you know? I mean, he's looking pretty excited to be out in the world. And uh, so we were only talking about the span of, uh, when was that? March 19th to March 31st. That's not very long at all. And they made fantastic progress. I actually just got this picture from the marketing department. That's why it's so crispy. Ooh. Uh, so this is thanks to Peggy Houghton who emailed it to me. Um, uh, we still have a bunch of Newman stuff apparently stuffed away. Um, so you can kind of see with a lot more detail all the different parts and um, I think personally it's not quite as terrifying when it's not at like cursed low resolution <laughs> picture. Yeah. yeah. It's a lot yeah. friendlier. <laughs> it looks quite a bit nicer like this. Uh no, you're okay. Uh, well, I can, uh, sure. I'll, I'll wait till you're done. I'll, I'll add a bunch of stuff. Okay. Here, so. so um in fall two thousand one we started airing a series of three different commercials on Newman. That's what they look like in color. Um so yeah, they show off the uh MSOE students and some staff. And um, these ads were ran in Milwaukee, the Fox Valley, Green Bay area, and the Chicago markets. So those are still kind of the heavy hitters for MSOE. And uh, those were the markets that we targeted in 2001. Uh, yeah, so I think actually specifically, um, one of the spots was specifically chosen to have nursing in it. On the web, Newman had a heavy presence. Um, and, uh, so, yeah, we apply now to MSOE. <laughs> On the homepage there was that, and at the bottom of the website, uh, there was a button to say learn about Newman, because Newman was all over TV and trade shows. Um, so yeah, we, we used him as kind of an animatronic billboard for MSOE, that's how he was billed to people. Uh, retirement. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, oh, no. he was phased out of marketing materials by around 2005. Some of his parts have been donated to worthy senior design projects, that's what they say. Um, so that's the legacy of Newman. Um, so he's not still around, but there is more to the Newman tale. Actually, one of my residents was on the team for Newman too. I asked him for pictures, he hasn't gotten back to me. Um, if I, you know, when I upload this to YouTube, I'll throw in any pictures I have. <laughs> But as you can see, we've got uh, four teams over two years working to build the second Newman. So those guys back in 1999 were some heavy hitters. Um, and right now, Newman 2 only has one working arm, among other things. So uh, slow and steady wins the race with Newman 2. Um, perhaps they're going for a bit more of an impressive design with more uh, range of motion and that sort of thing. Um, uh, Newman 2 is sponsored exclusively by American Family Insurance, which is kind of interesting. Um, and yeah, uh, that's what I have on Newman 2. Jeff, do you have anything to add on Newman 2? Any details you know? Well, he was presented to us in the Fluid Power Club. Um, I think also while working at the Fluid Power Institute, I've heard a couple of things about it. All I know is that the Fluid Power Institute, I don't think, is doing anything directly with Newman 2.0 as much as what happened with the original Newman. At least I, as an undergrad research assistant, haven't heard anything. Um, but yeah, when I last saw him in the Fluid Power Club, which is about two months ago, I want to say, 
Uh, I think it still only had like one working arm. I think they were like saying they had a shortage of something. Okay. Which does, go figure. Does he have the same face? I th I can't remember. I think he, Did he does have a. Face? Have a <laughs> well, well, because I like this was a thing. That I have a short memory, man. I'm a it's so <laughs> scary that memory wiping. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the new man one point was so scary. I just can't remember. And actually, past that. I probably it's should so have so done this earlier. No <laughs> one <laughs> but I received a large quantity of materials from uh, the I think admissions department. You see them? Okay. So you guys want to pass these around? These are all different materials. You know, I really, I've always wanted to go to you, but not with you. Yeah. 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 Internship? Will you? Associate professor? I think, uh, uh, ah, okay, and that's the end of what I have. Um, this was kind of a big undertaking. I talked to four people from marketing, a few librarians, and uh, we had Nick come out with the tape player, and Aiden brought one up from home. Uh, I'm gonna add some things for this. Sure. Yeah, this sure. I'll switch the slide, and if you want to come up here, Nick. no, no, that's okay. Um, just some other things that you guys might not know about Newman. Before Newman was created, the Fluid Power Institute had created a pneumatic game, which was like one of those flat maze games with a with a golf ball in it, and people could sit there and play it by moving it left, right, up, and down. So there was this like really big thing. And, the ball would like go one way, but like a golf ball bounces, so it would like you'd have to wait for it to stop, and then you could tilt it and move it and try to get it through the maze. And they time people to go through that. There was a bunch of fluid power like uh, trade shows, and Tom Wonky in the video, who is the head of the Fluid Power Institute, talks about that. Um, and what they always wanted to bring something to the fluid power. Uh, trade shows and it used to be that game and everybody liked it because it was a game and then they were like oh hey let's have a group of students who I believe worked in fluid power I'm not sure if they worked in fluid power or but I think they worked in that area and then they started working on doing Newman which they wanted to present specifically I believe at the fluid power trade shows you guys think Newman is scary looking? Okay, I will let you know that at the time, like in 2001, other than Disney, nobody had done like lifelike faces on robots yet. So like Newman was like the shit back in the day. Like, and I mean like people thought he was awesome. And like people would come and take tours of MSOE just to see Newman because that was the closest you could get to an android, a human looking robot, right? And so, Newman was in the commercials. I just talked to Dr. Valley, who's the MSOE's Vice President of Enrollment Management and Student Services, and he was the Dean of Enrollment Management at the time that Newman was around. So he was the person who made sure that Newman was put on all that stuff. Tons of people, like, wanted Newman, and it was MSOE's goal to actually expand a marketing campaign of Newman, but internally at MSOE, there was a little pushback on that, because Newman mostly represented engineering, and even in the video, and you can see those things, they were really trying to also push nursing, and you heard Tom Monkey say technical communication, and also the school of business, right? And to those departments, Newman was engineering, and not those other things. Now I think you can see how that would maybe apply to all the areas, right? So um, Newman then 
used to sit on the third floor of the CC building. So when you come up the elevators of the third floor and you hang a left, okay, there's the spirit room that's there. And that spirit room is where like in admissions counselors would meet with students. Okay, now admissions is on the, on the uh, first floor. But Newman used to actually sit there. So everybody walking into MSOE to come and visit from like 2001 to like 2005 saw Newman, like would walk by. People would literally take photos with him and stuff when they were coming to campus <laughs> visits. It was like a really, really kind of like big deal. And Newman did get taken apart. They took him apart for parts and stuff like that. He was big, like his base wasn't quite the size of this table, but it was almost the size of this table. So the bottom of it was, and you can see in this picture, half clear and half metal had the Fluid Power logo on it and stuff so that you can kind of see how it was controlled. But also, like, not only pneumatics, but controllers at that time. So go moving from, like, he had half analog controllers in him. Like, by, like, 20, by 2005, analog controllers were almost entirely gone. So, like, everything was digital right in that era. So, like, 2005, six, seven, everything was moving to digital controllers. So they couldn't even take him to those trade shows anymore because he was obsolete. So like when, when Fluid Power first showed him off, it used the most up-to-date controllers, analog and digital. Four years later, it was like, yeah, okay, that's like old school, dude, why are you guys showing us that, right? So um, in an effort to not look like MSOE was not technologically cutting edge. We stopped using using Newman, even though it was super popular with like high school students and stuff like that. So um, I don't know where his face went. I can I'll tell you that it's the thing that everybody likes. And and you know I know you guys think he looks creepy, but he did look creepy at the time. Like it, it looked pretty cool. And he he would blink and his eyebrows would go up and down so if you ever saw him like activated they'd be like hi how's it going you know it was it was kind of funny and stuff like that and of course they had it so that his hair could move and shake and stuff like that so um that's kind of a, a you know he was a bigger deal like that that i think people you know kind of give credit for him i thought he had some red in him too which is not reflected in this in this picture, so I don't know if like, maybe some of the tubing was red or whatever. Could be just my imagination playing jokes on me. So. Um, but yeah, I'm just trying to fill in some sure. stuff that I know I kind, of, kind of like about him and, and stuff like that, which is kind of interesting. And, and the, the I, I know one of the students, I believe, worked at Disney. Oh, I think they said that in the video. So he had, I think, uh, there was a, a Disney program, and I don't know if he was a part of this, where Disney would hire like interns out of MSOE, uh, kind of like in their Imagineering program and stuff like that. I'm not sure if that student was a part of it, but I know other students after that were also a part of that program. Yeah, so according to uh, this photo, uh -huh. he does have red tubing and he also has the MSOE logo on his neck. Okay, yeah, yeah. So I thought they changed some of that around. So. Did they like did like Tom Wanky and all those other guys take uh, Newman to IFPE Con Expo? Yeah. You know? Yes, I'm almost 100 percent sure. Con Expo Con Ag, I think you know the big yeah international fluid power exposition. Yeah, so yeah, I think which is yeah that I mean that like that was a, he was a big deal like when they first went there again like just trying. It, in in fact, I kind of think that MSU's Fluid Power Institute spent the most amount of money and time supporting the Newman project because they wanted it to be at those expos because they were trying to pull people into the consortium at the Fluid Power Institute and stuff like that and they knew that that would work and so like they were mostly like supporting and funding that like the most so man why don't we do anything cool like that today <laughs> we, we do newman 2.0 man like well, yeah. newman 2.0 yeah. you know i, I wish i wish yeah. like the food powers too we could build something yeah. fun like like that that game machine sure. again or yep you know. A, another very fun mm -hmm. uh project in the newman era right in this era was that there was uh, another senior design project that had, oh my gosh, I can't remember what his name was. I think it was like Frito or something. So there was a, 
student, Eric Wadick, who graduated from electrical engineering here at MSOE, and he built for MSOE's fencing club a fencing robot that you could fence. And like when you hit it, it would like score. So like there's fencing were locations where you would score and stuff like that. I'm still friends with Eric. Eric lives in town. He may still have that era robot. So I think, I think his name was Frito. I can't remember exactly what his name was, but uh, if you wanted me to, I could reach out to Eric and see if he has that era of robot. So, yeah. In the electrical section in the science building, there is a photo of the fencing robot along the lockers. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's still there. So, yeah, Eric is still super active. He actually came back, and I think in 2016, got his master's degree from MSOE, and he currently works at DRS Leonardo here in Leonardo DRS here in Milwaukee, working on government, literally secret government projects. So, which is kind of cool. But yeah, so robots were kind of like a big deal in the 2000 era, right there. So. Okay, any other questions for Nick? All right, oh, oh. I have a question. Okay. If Newman was starting to become a piece of old pneumatic technology, why was he dis like, uh, disassembled for parts? What particular parts were not like... Pres presumably like the digital controllers that were in them were still useful, I mean for senior designs, right? Like. So I must we owned it, but it's like you might as well reuse those parts. If you're not going to make him, keep him as a spokesperson, you're going to disassemble him. You might as well give the parts away, right? So I think it just went into other senior design projects, right? So I would have loved it to just be archived, yeah. just existing yeah. in one of the warehouses. You know, you know, I'll be honest, and I know we have our archivist. You're our archivist, right? So we have our archivist here with us. Like the archive doesn't have a ton of space, and Newman was big. You know, like he was really large, maybe worth saving his face just as a memento, but like, you know, it, it's hard to keep that much square footage in archives. And in professional archives, you literally keep track of things by square footage that something yeah. takes up. Yeah. So like, you know, keeping something like Newman, you have to like dedicate something to it. And maybe MSOE should have done that. Maybe we're not always that good because we don't, you know, history, we don't have like a history program here that maybe we're not always as good at keeping our history and technology usually looks forward rather than backwards right it's sort of the nature of the engineering school we tend to look forward instead of backwards we're less apt to keep something like that right so also but, the, yeah, the upkeep not only the yeah. storage space because space is obviously mm -hmm. the first thing you would think of but then the the maintenance the upkeep right. to absolutely have him you know if we kept him in an arc archival state you know like okay maybe he wouldn't work anymore mm -hmm. because you know the software we'd have to have an old mac with windows xp mm -hmm. on it to like run the <laughs> software or whatever yeah. but on top of that just like i mean i know it's compressed air but like i'm sure like those tubes mm -hmm. are probably plastic and that has mm -hmm. a horrible shelf plastic has Brittle. a terrible shelf mm -hmm. life and you know all that kind of like if there's grease or s stuff on him to keep him moving mm -hmm. you know all that kind of stuff would have to be things you would have to think about in order to keep him. Yeah, absolutely. So stripping him down for parts, you know, as boring of a end to his life, quote unquote, as that is, was probably the best yeah. move. And, and just to make a joke, we couldn't keep three VCRs alive. Yes. Right. Let alone, let alone, <laughs> let alone like, a uh, giant pneumatic <laughs> yeah, robot. Exactly. Oh, uh, this is kind of in, indirectly related. Um, but do you know if they're going to, because I know that they kind of like, I guess you would say in a way, archive the fluid power vehicle challenge bike from 2018. Mm -hmm. um, do you know if, uh, you know, if that's ever going to be taken down? And if not, are they going to have more space to archive other senior design projects that are pretty big like that nowadays? Because I know that back then space might have been still a very big issue, but it seems like now they're starting to preserve a lot more stuff. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what the uh, future of the space is. I can tell you right now, we're working through it. We got to, we have this huge collection we got from marketing that's like hundreds of linear feet that we have to get through. Um, and we don't, you know, the three of us that do archiving here, we all it's not even in our job descriptions. So it's when we have time, on top of our 
regular duties that we get paid for. Mm -hmm. So it's one of those things where I think with certain senior design projects, maybe something like in the future might be worth trying to keep. Uh, but I don't, I don't, at this point in time, I don't think there's any chance that we would keep like every senior design project in perpetuity. I mean, we have the paper, you know, like you can go downstairs in the archive, the special little archive room on the first floor um, with the figure of uh, the former president in it, which scares the crap out of me every time I go in there, even though I know he's there. But every senior design project uh, paper should be there, a copy of it, yeah. And, and so. like, like that Oscar Rorwath statue that's down there used to be in the streets of old Milwaukee display in the Milwaukee Ooh. Public Museum, mm -hmm. cool. which had an MSOE, yeah, I'm just giving you a little bit more history about that, where there used to be MSOE, like the original MSOE was in the streets of old Milwaukee and he was in the workshop and stuff. And when they replaced that with a different technology exhibit, we were given the Oscar War with statue, which stood in the student center for about like eight, nine years, creeping everybody out who walked past it. So, <laughs> He's um, still creepy. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> he looks so real. Uh, yeah. He looks like a real uh, person. It's so scary. The, uh, you know, I'll, I'll <laughs> say this about senior design projects, right? And just about archiving and, and museums in general, right? It, it seems like, oh, this is a re really super awesome senior design project. But all of that history, and even like of the mechanical things, whether it's Newman or whatever, unless you do a really good job of documenting what it is, it almost means nothing. So I'll give you an example. Until we put the new, uh, the new uh, food servery in on the third floor of the CC, is there anybody here who visited MSOE before 2020? Do you guys remember that there used to be airplanes that hung on the mm -hmm. ceiling? historical society club right like what's worth keeping right how do you guys decide that right and so that's why it's important like that's why in the library the archive has to have really decent conversations about what do we keep and what do we toss like do, do we disassemble Newman or not well all of a sudden 20 years later everyone's like fucking Newman's awesome I wish we could see him right like you're like okay but like right in the middle there nobody cared for a while so you know It's, everything kind of seems like like it's cool whenever it's new and then like after a while it kind of dips but then like you give it enough time and it comes back and everybody wishes they still had that or whatever yeah. It is. yeah well that's kind of the double-edged sword of technology right because mm -hmm. it's always like we've said a couple times now mm -hmm. it's always about what's the newest latest best thing and so then when something re inevitably replaces the old thing you just kind of throw the old thing away mm -hmm. and there needs to be, you know, it's a whole idea of like, is it worth keeping because I know or I can think that maybe in 10, 15 years this is going to be really important or in 10, 15 years is it not going to be at all and I can just get rid of it. So it's kind of like balancing those choices. Yeah, just to add on to that, I think the reason why people may want to see Newman now is almost similar to the idea of generational trends. Around the time Newman existed, people talked about Newman a lot, and so a lot of information might have, it might have became like oversaturated. They all got their fill of Newman. Newman became old men. And then after some time later, with no talk, barely any information about Newman, and him gaining like this cryptic image, new people kind of came up, discovered him again, and now they want to see him again because right now he's Newman. We barely know anything about him. So. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, you know, give it enough time, it would just happen again. We would talk about it a lot, or we'd come oversaturated, and then in due time, he would have to go back into the storage and wait maybe a decade or two more for it to regain that cryptic status. Yep, for sure. That, that's a great observation. And, and if you think even beyond that, like, so like this year, just to make uh, kind of an interesting point, Mickey Mouse went into the public domain this year, right? So, but that's Mickey Mouse Steamboat Willie Mickey Mouse, which looks different than sort of like the modern Mickey Mouse, right? So like certain images of Mickey Mouse are in the public domain. What's old is new, right? And so like you could write a story about Mickey Mouse now if you wanted to legally, right? Mm -hmm. But kind of the point what kind of what I'm getting at is that like, yes, what's old is new, 
becomes new and useful again. There's, there is, I, I really appreciate the fact that you're bringing up the fact that there's sort of a trend in that, right? And that, you know, you, na you navigate that over time, right? You're right, they should box it up and it'll be cool again in another certain amount of years, right? Or you come back with your kids and you're like, oh my God, I was at this presentation for Newman. And then there's Newman 8.0 or whatever, right? And you're like, oh, that's awesome. Just like there's Mickey Mouse 8.0 or whatever it is now, so. Well, uh, I think that's good, right? Everyone happy? Uh, no more questions? Then I guess we'll call it there. But uh, thank you all for coming out. I think this was a uh, more. Inspiring.